Jesus. Clap your hands together. Hallelujah. You can do more than that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Have a Father, we lift up our hands. We say thank you. You are worthy of all our praise. You, Lord, you are worthy. No one worship you for me. For all the things you've done.
and a privilege to have us here and I pray that the almighty God will release his blessing upon us even tonight in the name of Jesus even as we look deep in his word the Lord will speak to our hearts he will send out a word in season God will speak to our mind so that at a time like this we may be able to stand the Bible says let everyone take heed lest he falls so how can we take it of ourselves and of our salvation is by studying the word and meditating on the word of God. So tonight is another time to dig deep into the word of God. And I don't want to thank you for granted. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited that we are here again tonight to study the word of God. And for the next five minutes or so, I'll be taking us through worship to prepare our hearts and our mind for this lesson of tonight so please just join me as we we worship god and i want to pray that as we worship him in spirit and in truth god is going to speak to our hearts he himself is going to manifest himself in our lives and i want somebody to begin to lift up their voice and begin to speak in the holy ghost open your voice open your mouth Open your mouth wide and begin to speak in Holy Ghost. 
You go fire in your eyes and nothing hide from you. You see everything. Even the deepest way can open up. Expose every evil. Consume every wickedness. You are the rock of your fire. Come on, manifest yourself. You go fire in your eyes, Lord. Nothing hard from you. You see everything that is. Even the deepest wicked of men expose every evil, consume every wickedness. Give us a victory, Lord. Come on, man, consume me fire, consume me fire. We worship you today. You are the Lord, consume me fire. Come and manifest yourself. Consume me fire, consume me fire. We bow before your throne. You are the rock, consume me fire. Come and manifest yourself. Consume me fire, consume me fire. We worship you today. You are the rock, consume me fire. Come and manifest yourself. Consume me fire, consume me fire. We bow before your throne. You are the rock, consume me fire. Come and manifest yourself. Save my heart of fire. Make me a shining light. Save my soul of fire. Manifest yourself to be known. Speak through my voice, Lord. See through my eyes, yeah. You are the rock, consume me fire. Come and manifest yourself. Set my heart on fire. Make me a shining light. Set my soul on fire. Manifest yourself to me, Lord. Speak through my voice, Lord. See through my eyes, yeah. You are the rock, consume me fire. Come on, manifest yourself. Consume me fire, consume me fire. We worship you today. You are the rock, consume me fire. Come on, manifest yourself. Consume me fire, consume me fire. We bow before your throne. You are the rock, consume me fire. Come on, manifest Consume me fire, consume me fire. We worship you today. You are the rock, consume me fire. Come on, manifest. Consume me fire, consume me fire. We bow before your throne. You are consume me fire. Come and manifest yourself. You are the consuming fire. We place in fire in your eyes. Consume every evil. Come and manifest yourself. You are the consuming fire. We place in fire in your eyes. Consume every evil. Come and manifest yourself. You are the consuming fire. We place in fire in your eyes. Consume every evil. Come and manifest yourself. Consume fire. Consume fire. Consume fire. Come and manifest yourself. Consume fire. Consume fire. Consume fire. Come and manifest yourself. We call you by your name. You are the rock consuming fire. That is me, that is me, that is me. Come and manifest yourself. We call you by your name. 
you give us all the victory. Oh, Jehovah, come and manifest yourself. Oh, he demands, he demands, the only demand, the whole redeemer, he demands, he demands, he demands, the only demand. Oh, 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 he demands, oh, Jehovah, he demands, hey, he demands. For the many things you done for us, he demand. Oh, shut up, for the many things you gave to us, he demand. For your love and grace you shall to us, he demand, he demand, oh, he demand, be on your demand. Somebody worship Jesus. Somebody worship Jesus. Just give him praise. Lift up your voice in your own word and give him praise. Worship the Alpha and the Omega. Worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we just want to love you tonight because we have nothing to offer. But Lord, a word of thanks is enough for Lord. Lord, that we are here tonight is a privilege and we don't want to take it for granted, Jesus. That we are gathered again, oh Lord, to study at your feet, Lord. Oh, the Bible says, by strength can no man prevail. Thank you, Father, because it's not by power, it's not by might, but by your spirit, Lord. King of glory, we just want to say thank you, Jesus. Ancient of days, we just want to say thank you, our Father. We just want to lavish you, oh God, with a voice of thanksgiving. Oh, the Bible says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good. And his mercy that endures forever. Father, we just want to love you, Lord, and we say thank you. Father, we just want to love you, Lord, and we say thank you. Father, for the many good things you've done for us, we say thank you. For the many, many wonders you've done for us, King of Lord, we want to say thank you. Lord, that we are privileged, oh God, to be alive. Oh, it's an office to say thank you, Jesus. Oh, many slept last night, but today they are no more. But here we are again in your presence, Lord. Therefore, we can say thank you. Father, we just want to love you, oh Lord, with our worship. We just want to love you, King of glory, with our worship, Lord. We say thank you, Abba, Father. We say thank you, King of glory. We give you all the thanks, Lord. What can we say? We well, thank you, Father. Lord, come and do that which only you can do in our midst tonight. Lord, send us your word in his measure tonight. Send us your word in his power tonight, oh God. Oh, the Bible says, for the word of God is not bread and butter, but it's of power. Father, demonstrate your power by your word tonight. Demonstrate your power through your word tonight, Jesus. Father, we just want to thank you as we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. 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 Once again, we are welcome. Once again, we are welcome. The Almighty God bless us all in the name of Jesus. Indeed, it's a privilege that I don't always take it for granted that I'm being given the opportunity to share the word with us. I don't want to take it for granted, and I want to extend my greeting to my pastor for giving me this privilege to be the host of the digging deep tonight so i'm not taking it for granted and i say may the lord bless you sir in the name of jesus i'm honored and i'm not going to misuse this opportunity so i just want us to bow down our head even as we pray father we just want to thank you and bless you and appreciate you lord for yet another time another privilege father to dig deep into your word to hear what you want to say to us this Bible says, I will stand upon my watch and I will see what he will say unto me. 
Father, that's what we come tonight to do, to hear what you say to us tonight through your word. Father, Lord, we submit ourselves to you, Lord. Now that you speak to us in your own words, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that no man will be seen and no man will be heard, but Jesus will be glorified in our midst tonight, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I strip myself of any human understanding that the Spirit of God may have his full cause and his full manifestation through me, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for you will do that which only you can do. And at the end, you will glorify yourself in the name of Jesus. Thank you, most holy one. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Once again, we are welcome on tonight's Digging Deep. And during this Digging Deep, I'll be kind of like, I'll be swapping in between. I'll be putting on the slideshow for us to see, and then I'll be taking it off time to time. So please just follow me and I pray that the Almighty God will bless us even as we do so in the name of Jesus. So tonight we are considering a very important topic which I believe God wants to bless us with tonight. So it's a very exciting topic and I please I pray you brethren just follow me as we ride on tonight. So we are looking at the topic, understanding anger. Understanding anger. Anger is something that has destroyed so many people's testimony. Anger has destroyed so many te people's testimony based on the fact that they were unable to control when they were angry. And I want to tell you of a truth that anger in, itself, anger in itself is not bad, but it is what you do when you are angry. Because if you read the scriptures in so many places, you see where God has been angry. The Bible says, and God was angry with the children of Israel because they did this, they did that, and they did this, they provoked God to anger. So likewise for us, we have to be able to understand our anger and how to control it, to how to control the anger, to make sure that we don't always blow things out of proportion, to make sure that we don't always be on the wrong side or on the wrong side of the road when our anger wants to manifest. Because anger will often than not destroy your testimony. So, we are looking by the grace of God tonight at understanding your anger. And our text is taken from the book of John, chapter 2, from verse number 13 to verse number 17. John, chapter 2, from verse 13 to verse number 17. And I read, Now the Passover of the Jew was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those who sold ox and sheep and doves and money changers doing business. When he had made a whip of cord, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the table. And he said to those who, was, who sold dove, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Then his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house has eaten me up. May the Lord bless unto us the reading of his word in the name of Jesus. So, you see this scripture that we just read right now, you see how that Jesus saw how his father's house was being turned into a place, into a marketplace. It was being turned into a marketplace. So he was angry. He was angry with the people. Say, how come you are turning my father's house into a marketplace? This is not a business place. This is not Kachara market. This is not where. This is not Lulu, where you come to share to sell your goods. So he was angry. The Bible says he beat them out and then threw their things. That was what a show that he was angry with what they were doing. He was expressing that he was really angry with what they, they were doing. Say, if you want to say, please, can you take this to Lulu? Can you take this to Max and Spencer? Take it to the mall. 
Because here is not the mall. You cannot turn my father's house into a place of much and I cannot turn into a business place. So Jesus was angry and he drove them out of his father's house. So that's why I said, when we are being angry, we should know that we must be able to know how to control our anger. And the Bible says, when his disciples saw it, they remember the saying that was said concerning him, said the zeal of my father's house has consumed me. The zeal of his father's house has consumed him. So he could not bear it, he could not stand it to see people turning his father's house into a marketplace. So Jesus was angry with the people. He was angry with them and he could not hide his anger. He displayed it, he let them know that he was angry with what they were doing. So this is what I said, even when you are angry, you should be able to control it. This is from our memory verse. Our memory verse is taken from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. And the Bible says, be angry. You are open. You are free to be angry. Yes, you are free to be angry. Be angry as you want, but what? Do not sin. You have the liberty to get angry, but make sure you do not what? Make sure you do not sin. And do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. That's the Bible. It's not me saying here. The Bible says yeah, that you have the liberty to be angry, but make sure that when you are angry, know that there is repercussion, there is consequences of your anger. You should be able to contain your anger. You should be able to tell yourself that, ah, this, I'm angry right now. This thing that I want to do, would, my, would it give place to the devil? Would this anger, would it give place to the devil? Would it give the devil a foothold over my life? Will it give the devil a hold on the, over me? So you can now see that in that place, you will know how to control yourself. You know how to manifest yourself. You know how to comport yourself. If you can answer that question, then you show that, okay, whatever you are doing is not going to give place to the devil, fine to, for you. But if you know that, ah, I can do something, then after what? You will, I'll be filled with regret. You better do what? Choose not to be angry. Because the Bible also says what? Anger lies in the bosom of a fool. So it's better you tell yourself that I don't want to be a fool. And then don't be angry at all. But if you must be angry, eh, the Bible says yes. You are free. But what? Do not sin. Because I remember I, I used to have one of my friends back in Cameroon one of my acquaintance, whenever the guy is angry, what he does is, he will just be hitting things, he will use his head and be hitting whatever he sees. And then very soon you see that he will come down. As uh, if you hit this thing like this, and then at the end, your head broke or you die, what will be your game? And so just imagine that, okay, if that head thing that is hitting all this wood, hitting this one, if he was giving it on somebody, Will you imagine what he would have done? And when it's, it's gradually, when he is calm, will he be able to control? Will he be able to give an account of what that little anger like that caused him to do? So that is where the point lie. Can you give an account? Can you stand before God and say, ah, this thing that I did like this, I can account for it? So that is where the problem lies. So, our introduction says, anger of wrath is an intense expression of emotion. It involves a strong, uncomfortable, and hostile response to a perceived provocation, hurt, or threat. There are two Greek words in the New Testament that translate as anger. The one is what? Passion or energy. And the other means agitate, and the other one means boiling. Do you know? Do you know what it means to boil? I know. I will understand what it, to, boiling means. 
when you are when you are when you put water i don't want to talk about food because water release really, when you put water on the fire and then it has been there for a long time you see what the water is doing the water is trying to say okay he wants to become the owner of the pot he wants to to jump out of the pot but he cannot it's boiling it's boiling it's boiling it's boiling so that is what happens that's what happens to somebody when you're angry you 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 feel like you you can just swallow somebody but you cannot you cannot it's just an expression it's just what your mind is telling you but you cannot so if at all let's say you are cooking food but many of time we experience this when you cook food and then you see sometimes it boil and begin to overflow what do you do you just remove the lid and then air comes in and then what happened the tea will just go down it will just quiet as if it was not the one that was overflowing so that is the same thing that happens to to a human being if you feel that you are boiling you are boiling just open the cup put it or just open the lid and let air come in that's why they say well take a deep breath you take a deep breath and then you see how air comes in and then what the tea will just stable all that jumping that the tea was jumping and it was overflowing even pushing the lid it was pushing the lid and the lid was almost falling but when you just open the lid like this, you will just go back to yourself. You will just behave yourself. You say, yes, I behave myself. It will just go down. So that's the same thing. When you are angry, just open your lid. You know what the lid is in your life. Just put it open. Just open it and you see how air is going to come in and then it's going to go down. It's going to go down and then you'll be able to control it. You'll be able to control. You'll be able to manage your emotion. Because anger is just what an outburst of emotion. He has nothing to it's just an outburst of emotion. Do you remember what happened to Moses? God told him, just go and speak to the rod. So, because of what the children of Israel have done to him, the man went and hit the thing with emotion. Oh, so you want us to must give you water from the rock. You and who? So it was not <laughs> you and who. God said, Go and speak to the rock. He said, You want us, you and who? God was the one that sent him, he was just a messenger to go and speak. But he went, he did not give glory to God. He was comparing himself. God said, God, you want us to give you water from there. And then he hit the rock. And then God said, hey, I have called you today. You will not enter the promised land for this thing that you have done. So you see, there is always a repercussion when there is outburst of anger. Your enemies are just waiting for you to hit that rock and then they'll say, aha, we cast you. This is your end. And remember, because of that thing, the Bible says when Moses, when Moses finally died, he took God's intervention. The devil said, ah, if this guy did not enter the promised land, that means it belongs to me. He took God's intervention. The Bible said they were battling for his corpse. They wanted him to, to take him to hell. See, if God can reject you, that means you belong to me. So let us be careful with the outburst of our anger because you may not be able to give an account of it still the consideration of our introduction he says everyone struggles with varying degrees with anger sadly people tend to justify their anger instead of accepting responsibilities for it the question now uh, what does the Bible say about anger? And what point does it become a sin? What does the Bible say about anger? And at what point does it become a sin? So, like that last paragraph of our introduction, it says everybody has a measure, and some people justify it. They say, ah, that is my weakness. <laughs> it is my weakness. Yes, you. it is a good thing that you've discovered that it is your weakness. So what do you do about it? Say, ah, he's the one. He provoked me now. He provoked me. He provoked me, so I had to give it to him. I had to give it back to her. Then you, be, you become the same with him or her. So it is very, very important a thing that we notice that everything we do as a result of anger. God will not say, ah, oh, Brother Julius, I understand that you were angry. That's why you did it. No, he, there is nothing like God understands. 
Because I've talked with some people and say God understands. There is nothing like that in the scripture that God understands. The Bible says, when we shall appear before him, everybody shall give an account of whatever they did, be it good or evil. You give an account to it. So there is nothing like God understands. No, it is nothing like there's nothing like that in the Bible. So whatever you do, be sure that you can stand before God and say, Ah, God, accept your responsibility. That's why. That's what that that Antino says. Accept responsibilities of your action. Accept responsibilities of your action. And the Almighty God will help us in the name of Jesus. So what does the Bible say about anger? What, what, what does the Bible say? Yes, you were angry and you did it, but what does the Bible say about anger? Number one, what is God's attitude to the wicked or wicked acts according to Psalms 7 verse 11? Psalms 7 and verse number 11, the Bible speaking there says, God is a just judge he is what a just judge and god is angry with the wicked every day god is what god is angry angry with the wicked we are talking about what anger god is angry with the wicked every day he is angry with the wicked every day so you you see if you if you place if you place this thing now on a scale if you place it on the scale, okay, now I am angry, and then I have done something, and then now God is angry with me. You see that what? Your, the scale will be falling on the other side. Your anger, with God's anger, will not be able to balance the scale. So you just better give yourself brain and just, just tell the person, eh, I know you have tried, but I'm not going to follow you. I choose not to be a fool. And Mark 3, 5 says, And when he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their heart, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched out his hand and was restored. His hand was restored. Oh, this was talking about what? The man that Jesus was trying to heal in the temple. And then the people said, Ah, it is not good to do work on a Sabbath day. So I was asking them, uh -uh, is it better to do good or to do bad on a Sabbath? The people do not answer. And then Jesus, the Bible says, and Jesus looked at them with anger. He looked at them with anger and then told the man, stretch out your hand. And the man stretched out his hand and his hand was made whole. He stretched out his hand and his hand was made whole. So, in as much as you are angry, you see that we are talking about two entities here. We are talking about God, we are talking about Jesus. They too were angry. Even from the, our scripture that we read, we saw how Jesus was angry. But we, we saw that his anger tend to bring what? To bring glory to God and to man. Praise the Lord. His anger turned to bring glory to him and to humanity. So you there is somehow you can be angry. Like if you see something that is not right, you have the right to be. And number two says, can the believer be angry? So that was this was just to answer that question. Can a believer be angry? And to what limit, according to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27, which is our memory verse. Be angry, yes, no doubt. But what? Do not let the sun go down on your wrath and do not give place for the devil. Yes, you are, you can be angry. Praise the Lord. Because it's an emotion. You can be angry because it's an emotion. According to the it's an emotion. You can you are, you are allowed to be angry. But what? Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and then do not do what? Do not give room for the devil. As you do not allow the sun to go down your anger, also make sure that you do not give room to the devil. Because if you are angry, you are angry. 
after the sun has gone down, you have opened the door for the enemies to strike. Remember, the Bible says that what? Whosoever break the edge, the serpent will bite. So you have given the devil a foothold all by your life. You have given room for the devil over your life. Remember the example I gave on Moses. He gave a foothold. The devil got, the devil he was even trying to stand on top of it to say, this guy, this, this corpse belongs to us. This guy is going with us to hell. So, likewise, that is what happens to our lives. When you do some, you are angry and you express on top of, ah, the devil says, yes, that is my, that, 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 that is my own, that's my own, that's my son, that's my daughter. He's just behaving just like me. So, to not allow him to glory over us, yes, you just, yes, I, I, okay, I was angry with you, but my sister, my brother, let's forget about this thing. Let's make peace. What is, what is there in it even? Let bygones be bygones. Collapse. And then you forget about it till you move on with your life. You don't keep it anytime you see, because there is something I've discovered. After, if you're angry with somebody, before you know it, it turns to hatred. Before you know it, it turns to malice. Before you know it, it turns to unforgiveness. Just see the number of things that is attached to that small anger. Because every time you see that brother, that sister, you just turn your face. You meet that brother or sister in the church, you turn your face. You are going to talk to somebody, you don't see him talking to that person, you change direction. Because why? Well, you don't want to talk to that person. Because you are angry with that person. So you see one small thing like that, you see how the chain is now becoming long. And then the devil now begins to build on top of it. Say, I'm waiting for you. I'm seeing how you are going to make that happen with all this bag that you are carrying, with all this luggage that you are carrying. He will not be looking at you and then be smiling. But the Almighty God will give us the grace to skate through in the name of Jesus. So, number three says, how does the Bible describe those who are hasty to anger? According to Proverbs 14, 29, he calls them what? Fools. That's what Proverbs 14, 29 called them. They are fools. Proverbs 14, 29 called them fools. Say, so he who is slow to wrath has great understanding, but he who exploded exalts folly. He's just showing folly, just showing that what? He's, he's, not, he's not somebody, he's not somebody that you can count on. Say, so he just exalts folly, he's just showing folly, he's just showing, he's just behaving foolishly. And Ecclesiastes 7 and in verse number 9, it says, Do not be hasty in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. It's only in the bosom of fools that anger has found his resting place. As far as you choose to tell him, uh -uh, I am not your candidate. Yes, that, that brother, that sister, yes, they hurt me. They, they, they made me angry, but I choose not to be angry with them. I choose to let it go. I choose to. Because you are, you are the master of yourself. I choose to let it go. Number four says, God gave three commandments to his children according to Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 31, who says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And remember what I said. I said, All these things, if you put anger, all these other things that they are not attached bitterness, wrath, clamor, evil speaking, and malice they all, they all not join on that simple fact that what you were angry with that person. And then you see, before you, you know it now, you begin to manifest all these other ones. All these other ones will now be attaching to it. When you see that brother, when you see that sister, you begin to leave malice. You never see anything good about that brother or that sister again. If they are talking anything, ah, you say this one, this one, this one, this one. Because why? 
you have been angry with that brother, you have been angry with that sister. So it has been built up, it has been building up, it has been building up. You didn't give, you didn't talk to that person, you didn't call that person and say, ah, let's forget about this thing. Yes, I know I am hurting inside. The Bible says, as much as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. It is you, it is on you, it is for your good. Because whatever you do is for your good, is not for that person. So we need to take note that what we are doing is for our good and not for the other person. We do it for our own good. So please be quick to forgive, be quick to let go. So number five says, what does grievous words do according to Proverbs 15, 1 and 18. What does grievous words? Because sometimes when you are angry, like I said, when you are angry, you begin to throw words anyhow. You, you, your dictionary of words begin to manifest itself at that point. You just begin to throw them left, right, center, anyhow. But what does the Bible say about that? What does the Bible say about those grievous words? Proverbs 15, 1 says, a soft anger, a soft answer, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So when the person says something that is not right, for you to make peace to reign, you calm down your voice. You don't, you don't go shouting with them on the same tempo. And verse number 18 says, a wrathful man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger and lays contention. I remember our pastor used to say, he said, hurting people hurt people. Hurting people hurt people. So a wrathful man stirs up strife. Hurting people hurt people. So you, you better choose not to be hurting. Be, pretend as if that thing that they said, it didn't touch you in any way. Or if at a certain point you could not control yourself, like the Bible says, do not let the sun go down. Make peace. Go and make peace so that you can do what? Give shame to the devil. Number six says, God warns his children regarding anger in Matthew 5, 22. He says, but I say to you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause, shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. So you see, if you're angry with your brother without a cause, because Jesus was angry with a cause, he said, God, 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 this is my father's house. You are turning to a market. He carried that thing. Everything, throw outside, everything, throw outside. Open the door, door, fly out. Kick everybody out of his father's house. Because why? There was a cause for it. He said, whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of what? Of the judgment. Shall be in danger of the judgment. Please, we should not misunderstand this place or that does not mean that you just go about and say, ah, after all, there is a reason now. I have a reason to be angry. Remember what the Bible says. Be angry, but what? Do not sin. Do not sin. Don't be angry, and then you begin to keep malice. Don't be angry, and then you, you begin to look for a way to reverse. Oh. So that, is, that one is not acceptable. Don't be angry, and then you begin to look for a way to pay back. That is what the Bible says. You can be angry. But what you sit. Yes, you have hurt me. Yeah. This pain, I cannot bear it. You can cry if you must. If you need to cry, cry. But fighting, no. Because, uh, like my wife, if she's angry, the best way to calm her angry is that she will cry. Well, and then after that, collapse. So if that's the way you come, if that's the way you open your own pot, the lid, by crying, please just do it. 
you have my permission. You have my permission to cry it out. Just cry and let it go. But don't go fighting. If you must cry, cry. And then you let it go. Praise the Lord. If you have to cry, cry. So don't say, okay, the Bible says, I, I, if I have a cause, if, the, if I have a reason, I should be angry. So because you slap me, I have a reason. It's a reason. So I am going to give you a blow. Instead of a slap, I'm giving. No, that's not what it means. It means just be angry that, ah, you slap me. Ah, you slap me. Ah, and then you cry and show the but I am angry. You cry and then after you forgive. Praise the Lord. If you must cry, cry. If you have to run to the stream and go and carry water, run to the stream, go and carry water, and then after you forgive. If you have to go and look for something and eat, go and look for something and eat, and then after you forgive. But don't fight back. <laughs> so that is the cause. Don't fight back. It doesn't mean you go and then you say, ah, the Bible says I have a cause, so I'm going to fight you back. I'm going to give you teeth for that. No. And number seven says, describe wrath. According to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 27, and in verse number 4a, it describes wrath as wrath is cruel and anger is torrent. Wrath is what is cruel, is cruel, is cruel. It has nothing good to offer. That's what it means. Anger has nothing good to offer. If you put anger on a balance, there is nothing good that will always come out of it. So we should be careful and know that it has nothing to offer. Oh my God. What about not from? has nothing to offer so what does when does anger become sin one when it is motivated by pride when anger is motivated by pride it becomes sin first Samuel chapter 18 verse 6 to 9. 1 Samuel 18, verse 6 to 9, the Bible says, Now, it had happened as they were coming home, when David was returning from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with joy, and with musical instruments. So the women sang as they danced and said, Saul has slain his thousand, and David his tens of thousands. And what happened? <laughs> because of that, because of that innocent, that innocent song that those women were just singing innocently, that was the beginning of David's problem with Saul. Say, ah, uh -uh. say these people, they are singing this song like this very soon, they want him to become their king. And that was David's problem. That was David's problem with Saul. Till he start he become a caveman, start running, start running away from Saul. He now spend the rest of his life running away from Saul. So you see, please, you pardon me. I will take only one one scripture of from all these passages. I will not read all of them because of time. So just one scripture, but you can read the rest as the outline has been shared. So you see, when anger is motivated by pride, it will burn out, it will turn to jealousy. If you read Genesis 4, 3 to 9, you'll see also the, the part of what Cain and Abel. They all offered offering unto God. The Bible says, and God had respect on Abel's offering. Because of that, Cain became angry, and God warned him, say, ah, as you're angry like this, know that danger lies ahead. And just like he removed the word from God's mouth, so are you just saying it? Wait until I do it, you will see it, that you already saw it. He did not, not allow God to finish the word. 
he just did the thing as God was telling him. He lured the brother to the bush and killed him. That is what anger can do when it is born out of pride. Praise the Lord. So we need to be careful that you that that sister has bought a new car. The, the thing you should do is be happy for her. If it's your neighbor, be happy for her because why God is in the neighborhood. That's what the TJ Jack said. So you don't need to be judged, you don't need to be angry. If my neighbor is being blessed, that means God is in the neighborhood. That means the next person, the next door should be mine. But what do we do? You become angry. Jealousy sets in. And then before you know it, you, you are no longer talking to your neighbor. Neighbor will get up in the morning and say, neighbor, you turn your face. The neighbor that you used to, to greet with, you used to talk and dress, he now call you neighbor, you turn your face and begin to look the bush because he has, she has bought a new car. It doesn't, that, that is not how it should function. We should be rejoicing with those that are rejoicing and then mourn with those that are mourning. Not that you know, the, this one is going up and then you, 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 I like the way my says they are both backbiters, backbiters. So the only thing that will do is that they are at the back. So they will stay there. You will always be in front of them. Backbiters always are always on the back. They will stay in the back. You always be in front of them, giving them reason to be angry. Say, hey, you want to be biting back now? Go and be biting the back. And I will give you reason to be angry. Give you more reason. I bought only a car. You are angry. Wait until I buy a jet. You then dig a hole and enter inside. So when it's born out of anger, it is very, very dangerous. Number two, when it is an expression of hostility or born out of proportion, when it's uh, uh, born out of hostility or born out of proportion, you don't have any reason, but you are just angry. Ecclesiastes 6, 7, verse 9 says, Do not be hasty. Do not hasty in your spirit to be angry. For anger what rests in the bosom of fools. So I say, ah, the only thing you do is just tell yourself that I, I, I choose not to be a fool. I choose not to be a fool. Say, I know. I know that it is paining me. Something is boiling in my tummy. Something is making in my tummy, but I choose not to be angry. That is the devil. He wants to cajole me to fall into your trap, but I choose not to fall into your trap. I choose to rejoice with you because you are rejoicing. And number three, when it is unproductive and thus distorts God's purpose. When it's what? Unproductive and distorts God's purpose. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31 says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. That is like Jesus, who was angry because they were selling in his father's house. He was doing it what? His anger, he turned to what? Towards the glory of God. That's what I said. You can be angry and do something that is giving glory to God. Because that was what Jesus did. All that he did was to give glory to God. So likewise, also when you are angry, ask yourself, this anger, will it give glory to God before you begin to manifest it? Before you let the world see it? Say, so I'm going... You know, when when we're in the world, say I'm going to show him my color. I'm going to show her my color. You, which color do you have? Apart from the black that you are, or you are a white, is there any color? I'm going to show them my color. Because why? It is unproductive. It distorts the purpose of God. And number four, when it allows to linger, it leads to malice. Remember, we already read the scripture, so I'm not going to read the scripture. I say, well, all these things, when you keep them, they will be on the turn to what? To malice. Let me read 1 Corinthians 14, 20. It says, brethren, do not be children in understanding. However, in malice be babes, but in understanding be mature. Choose to be a babes. When it comes to malice, say, no. choose to be a baby. But in what? In understanding, show people that I am matured. Show people that I am matured by what? Uh, showing understanding. Sh showing the people understanding. So you show them that what? You are matured.
So, when, when, instead of attacking the problem, your with attacking the problem at hand, we attack the wrongdoers out of bitterness and hurt. Praise the Lord. Because some it, I always is not the person. Remember when Peter Jesus told Peter that ah, the time is coming when I'm going to sacrifice myself. Peter said ah, God forbid that you do this. What did Jesus do? Jesus rebuked the he attacked the problem the devil that was behind him speaking. Hebrew chapter twelve verse fifteen says, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this, many become defiled. So you need to look at the roof, target the problem, and not the person. It is not the person, but there is something. There is the spirit. Jesus addressed the spirit that was speaking through Peter. He didn't rebuke. He said, Peter, I rebuke you. He said, devil, I rebuke you. So when it is allowed to fall over, without restraint, resulting in a scenario in which hurt is multiplied. Proverbs 29 and 11 says, a fool vents all his, fault, all his feelings, but a wise man holds back. A fool will, do, or will just throw everything out. He will just vomit everything out, but a wise man will, do, or will hold it back. And lastly, when the angry person refuse to be pacified the crush, or keep it all inside you bottle everything inside you refuse they are saying sorry now sorry now sorry now he said no i don't want to hear anything then you find out that it is not a healthy thing so any, I've, I've not received any questions so far. That means there is no question that we have. Because if there, I told me if there's some, if you have a question, you type it, or you want to ask your question, you can unmute. If you have a question, you can unmute and ask because that's. No question. Sister Joy, do you want to ask a question? Because I'm, I'm seeing your hands struggling to do something. I don't know. OK, no. So OK, so OK. Sister Diana, you want to ask a question? No, please. <laughs> Maybe my no. husband has something to say. Okay, go ahead with your question, please. I have just two minutes to run up, please, so your question should be snappy. Okay, so no question. Uh, conclusion. I take us to the conclusion then. <clears throat> So, in conclusion, anger is a natural emotion just like love is. However, the Bible warns us against excessive, unproductive, and destructive anger, which leads to sin. And I pray that the Almighty God will help us to control our anger in the mighty name of Jesus. So, with that note, I hand over to the pastor. God bless you all. Have a wonderful night. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Julius, for that wonderful study. And I'm sure we've, we've all learned. I'm sure we've, we've gained something. It's a very important topic that we've treated tonight. Uh, you, you are not responsible for 
how people react or what they do. Uh, but you are absolutely responsible for how you respond to their actions. So you have no responsibility on how people will behave because people will behave irrationally. People will behave in a way that is hurting. People will behave in a way that is painful. You know, they can malice you and uh, they can malign you. They can lie about you. Uh, so you don't, have a, you don't have control over that. But what you have control over is how you react to such things. And what we have learned today uh, is that we should choose our reaction and not, and not to be angry. When we say we can be angry uh, because people do things that hurt us and it gets us to be angry, but there is a limit to our anger. And the limit that God gave to that anger is let not the sun go down on that and um, don't 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 let it boil over so i pray that god will help us to be able to control ourselves to be able to control our emotions and you know in such a way that we do not allow the anger to boil over and i like the way pastor julius put it you know it's uh, anger doesn't go alone it works with it it has brothers and sisters and cousins and nephews and nieces it has brothers and sisters you know like Mali's. I like grudge, you know, like bitterness. And, and the mother of them all is unforgiveness. And, and when we allow anger to go unfettered, uncontrolled, then it tends to all those. So I pray that God will grant us the grace to be able to control ourselves and not allow ourselves to be taken over by anger in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, now just before we, we close tonight, I uh, want to say a thank you to everyone uh, for getting in touch with with each other and for making sure that we follow up on each other please i want us to continue doing that to keep encouraging ourselves and give and calling ourselves i want to appreciate the pastors especially you know, the, all the ministers you know, for making sure that we're able to reach out to, to different members that are in different situations so let's keep on doing that and among ourselves as well i also want to appreciate those that have been giving to the welfare team to help us to be able to meet the need of those that are in, to meet the people that are in need. You know, so please don't be wary of good doing. For in due season, you will reap if we don't grow weary. So let's keep up that. And like we always said, happy to share, happy to bear one another's body. That's why we are here. So if you have any need, as a challenge, please don't keep quiet. Don't suffer in silence. Uh, reach out to the minister in charge of your unit. And I'm sure be able to reach out a, a happy hand uh, to support in such a time like this and the lord will bless you as you do so in jesus name and finally i want to appreciate everyone that is still paying their tithes and that are finding the way to give their offering the lord will honor your sacrifices and it will bless your bread and water and take away sicknesses from, from your houses in jesus name and uh, next next coming friday by god's grace uh we i will be talking on one and conqueror part two and i tell you it's going to be an interesting and a powerful service by god's grace so please let's not miss it and let's make sure that we encourage and invite people to join the the, the service online and then we can have a great time together in god's presence and finally i would like to encourage us that let's not go weary don't be tired don't be faint at it because very soon sooner than when we expect this issue will pass um, we are all coming out better and stronger in Jesus' name. And it's my prayer that you are covered with the blood of Jesus. You are exempted from this plague and no evil will come near your dwelling places in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's pray. And thanks for joining tonight. And let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for what we've learned tonight. Thank you for your time at your feet, even to be to learn. Daddy, we pray to you beyond the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray the grace not to be hungry and the grace not to sin as a result of anger. Lord, we pray that you will release upon us in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we pray that you will help us to control our emotions. We pray you will help us to control our reaction to people's actions, oh God, in such a way that it will not lead us into sin in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray, oh God, that your mighty hand will keep us safe, will sustain us, and will preserve us in the name of Jesus. As we go forth tonight, let your presence go ahead of us. Let your presence be around us. 
and let your presence keep us from all evils in the name of Jesus. Lord, we remember all our loved ones, people that are already affected by this uh, COVID-19. Lord, we pray that your mighty healing hand will be upon them for good, and by your mighty hand, you will restore their health and heal them from every form of sickness and diseases in the name of Jesus. Lord, for your children, I cover them with the blood of Jesus. And I say, Lord, every one of us are exempted from this pandemic. It will not come near our dwelling places. It will not come near our, our homes. It will not come. It will not impact even our source of livelihoods in the name of Jesus. Lord, you will keep and preserve us and cause your name to be glorified in the name of Jesus. And Father, we commit even the vision of Friday into your hands. We pray, Lord, that you will take preeminence and cause your name to be glorified in the name of Jesus. You will preserve and keep us even till that day and beyond if you tarry in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you will do much more. To you be all the glory and honor, Lord. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great evening.